Well, the thing is, you don't know you're ill, that's the thing. We were on holiday, in, I think we were in Prague actually, over there, a the crowd of us, and we were walking around this beautiful square. I came over so tired, I just got on a bench and laid down and fell asleep for about an hour while everybody waited for me to wake up. I knew I had a bit of a problem, but that's the way it affected me, and then I got so tired of I could fall asleep on a fence. That's how you felt. You could fall asleep anywhere. They don't want you to get real, feel really bad. That's why they introduce the subjects of dialysis. And anyway, after about three weeks, I felt fantastic. And I do now feel fantastic. It is rejuvenating my old life. You know, how I actually feel, you know. You don't realise until then how rough you felt. I'm, luckily, I'm quite close to the hospital. I go three times a week, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So I get my weekends free. I was in the frame of mind that it was never going to happen. But at the back of my mind, I knew it, would, it was going to happen. But when they actually told me it was going to happen, well, I thought it was the end of the world. But as I say, it's not the end of the world. You have to work round it which I do. Well, when I get there, they, you step on the scales and they weigh you. And they normally go, oh my God, you're overweight. You're given a dry weight. And uh, whatever weight you are over that, that's how much fluid they've got to take off you. If you're two kilos over, they want to take two litres of fluid off you. They take your blood pressure and take your temperature. And then you go to your bay and then they plug you in. Well, where I am, it's very, very busy. And a lot of banter goes on. Uh, quite funny, some of it. And you get to know all the nurses. You get to know all the patients on your shift. And uh, I try to make the best of it and have a bit of fun. And that's the way I personally handle it. You know? Yeah, the biggest disappointment was not being able to use the caravan because the wife and I used to go all over France and Spain for some really good times. And I realised I couldn't do that. And I thought, I really thought it was like the end of the world. Oh, we can still get away for long weekends. I, I dialyse on a Friday at three normally, but if I uh, book up an early one, if I can get a space for a seven o'clock one in the morning and then a late one on the Monday, we can have two or three nights away. And we do that quite a bit, because that's all we can do in as far as you know, just going away. Um, but we've had holidays on the Isle of Wight. In fact, I've got a fortnight booked up in the Isle of Wight this year. And I've got my dialysis booked on the Isle of Wight in Newport. Six, six sessions on the Isle of Wight, which I've done before. And they're very, very nice people and look after you. And it's quite a nice experience. And the nice early morning ones. So I've got the rest of the day over there, and all the families over there as well. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah, regarding my fistula, which I'll show you, which is they cut you there and join two veins together on the main artery, and that little bulge there is what they call a fistula, and it's full of blood and it buzzes, and the blood really whizzes around there very fast. So they're getting a decent flow up that vein there, and uh, I don't know whether you can see it, but they put a needle in there, needle A, down that way, which brings the blood up. Then they put another needle B in there, which fires it back in when it's been cleansed. I'll cover that up because you have to look after it. You have to keep it out of danger because it is your uh, access to life. I do a lot of the cooking indoors. I, uh, for my sins, I started making some sausages. Yeah, but you know, after about seven or eight goes, we got something that was worth eating, you know. And uh, some of the lads over the pub heard about it and asked me to see if I could make them a couple of packs. So I did that, and and now I suppose once a month I make a big okay. batch and take them over the pub and they give me a couple of quid for me beer money, you know. and uh, it's a bit of a social thing, you know. When I walk in the door, it's the sausage man cometh. <laughs> Yes. 
Well, you do think your life's over, but you've just got to you've got to handle it. You've you've got to you just got to push yourself. I was very very down, but I've had a lot of support from the family and friends. They are supportive. They always ask how you are. How's your dialysis going? I go, oh yeah, great. You know, <laughs> smashing. <laughs> And you just got to do it, otherwise you'd just go under, wouldn't you? So, I'll try not to go under. Try and see the lighter side of, of life with it all. My name is Mrs. Sushila Disha. Uh, I have been going for hemodialysis for about uh, three and a half years. And I'm a retired teacher when I come from dialysis. You know, I want to sleep. But the next day I'm all right. I'm okay. Because if I've got enough rest, then I'm all right. My husband helps me a lot. I can do things, but not so much. Before I used to invite people at home for co for dinner like that, but now I can't do much. And then uh, we go out also sometimes. We take a walk, but not very far. You know, I don't like to walk much on my leg. <laughs> I go to hospitals with transport, which is arranged by our uh, sisters from the hospital. And uh, it's uh, quite all right. They come, take me, and they bring me back. The driver helps a lot. Uh, you know, takes my bag and puts it in and uh, holds my hand and all that. Where my husband is there to also help me out at the end. Then he goes out, you know. After leaving me, he goes to the um, library and shopping and all that. He does that afterwards. <laughs> I have made friends. At those, when we sit there in the waiting room, uh, there are two special ones. Uh, I take food for them, they bring for me. I have made some friends also who talk uh, uh, with me in my own language. We meet here. Yeah. Yeah. We have got phone numbers and all. You know. Sometimes we chat also. I saw the patients, I didn't like it, <laughs> first sight. <laughs> but now I'm okay with them all. <laughs> Not scared, but I said, uh, why me, this uh, going there and coming hospitals, you know, I don't like to go to hospitals much. So uh, I said, why go there and come and this and that and lying, leaving the things at home, you know, and all that way. <laughs> So I take it cheerfully. I've read in the books and all that uh, you have to take it uh, lightly because you have got this disease, I've got this disease. So I have to take it lightly because this, uh, I asked the sisters and all, so yeah, it is lifelong. So I can't escape from it. So I am all right and I read good books which encourages me, you know, like uh, this religious book. They tell me that whatever you get, Maybe God wishes that way, and then uh, everybody, the life is to end, isn't it, at uh, some time. So everybody has to take it uh, uh, that way. So I take it cheerfully, at the moment it is all right, suits me. Hello, I'm Marion. Um, I'm 67 years old and uh, I've been on this home hemodialysis system now for about 10 months. I've been on this um, home dialysis provided by the Next Stage machine, which is a, a very new concept, I believe, in this country. It's an American machine. It takes about 
three quarters of an hour, um, maybe to an hour to set it up before I can use it. I do about three, three and a quarter hours, depending on how well my line is working on actual dialysis. So I can generally work out that one from starting off um, at whatever time it is, four, four and a half hours later, I should be walking out of my room and be finished. Uh, I was given six weeks tuition to, to learn how to operate it and then, then I came home and, and here I am and it just gives me so much more freedom. So I'm doing five days a week on dialysis now with this uh, machine here at home. I still prefer that because it means, as I say, I can dialyse when I want and uh, you know to fit in with social events that I might have or trips I want to go on. So um, that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm appreciating it really. Um, I have lines that uh, come out of my neck um, with screw caps on the end and, and then you know the connections are the same on the lines from the machine and you just screw them together effectively. I'm restricted to how many showers I can have because getting the exit site uh, wet is uh, frowned upon. Um, but I've always, since I, since I was on this form of dialysis, showered twice a week and then I managed with other forms of, of washing in between times. Um, but I, I did ask the question, uh, you know, is there any way I can swim with this, the lines? But they say, no, no, no. Too risky, you know, with the, the bugs and things. They worry a lot about infections getting into people with necklines. They much prefer you to have a fistula, but um, it wasn't possible in my case. Um, it was a bit uh, nerve-wracking the first uh, couple of weeks, but you become confident. Another analogy is learning to drive. You know, the more you do it, the more you're aware of the problems and how to deal with them when they crop up. The home dialysis team down at Lister are excellent and uh, I can always ring them if I have a problem. I mean, even a couple of weeks ago, something cropped up, I can't remember what it was now, and I wasn't sure how to deal with it, so I just rang Sibby down there and, um, yeah, she talked me through it. We, we sorted that out, so it's nice to know that that back, backup is there. Um, I suppose it gives you more confidence in, in yourself, more sense that you're in control of, of your own life and your own treatment. You're not, um, you're not under anybody else's control, which is something I used to hate feeling in, in the hospital, that uh, my life was totally within the control of, of the people there. And nice as they were, I didn't really want that. I wanted to be in total charge of my own life. And so from that point of view, much better. Oh, I think I'm quite lucky because I'm, I'm really well set up in there. I've got a television in there uh, so I can watch television. I've got um, I've got my books which I can read or I've got puzzle books. We've even got a laptop computer now which I take in there. If we're having a good uh, stable dialysis that's fine. I can get on, write letters, watch TV, anything like that. Yeah. Can't do the ironing, that's all. <laughs> Just those sort of things. Well, we've just recently, for the first time, we had a five-day break uh, at Warner's um, holiday uh, and took this stuff with us for the first time and uh, it worked really well. We were very pleased about it. Um, the company, Kimmel, who supply all my stuff, they sent all the boxes ahead. So when we arrived in the room, there were these uh, this pile of cardboard boxes. I only dialysed there twice. There was a lot of stuff there. Um, and we managed to get the machine in the car Andrew and our next door neighbour managed to get the machine in the car uh, and we had to just take disposables like the syringes and what have you. Um, it's quite a lot of gear to take with you and there's a lot provided but it worked, the system worked. I would have no hesitation and recommend anybody give it a try. Yeah. And, uh, when I first started it was I felt much better because you are getting more more dialysis and so your system is more uh, clean really um, like everything else you become used to how you feel but um, initially we both felt that you know I was much better doing it at home apart from anything else apart from the fact you are getting the extra dialysis it, it makes it possible for you to be able to eat and drink more normally your, your food and, and liquid restrictions are less 
So, you know, that, that helps as well. I think it's something we've got, I've got to live with uh, at the time being. And so you have to be positive about it. And, you know, the options to doing dialysis is not very good. So, you know, you, you live with it, you have to, and you make the best of it that you can. My name is, uh, is Lawrence. I'm in peritoneal dialysis. I'm 77. Well, I heard about dialysis before. I knew someone who, uh, a friend, who was on it. Although I've never seen the machine, never seen it done, but I heard, heard of it. There's something that, uh, as far as I was concerned, these things happen. You're, you're, you're ill, and that's it. Just have to make your mind up uh, that uh, this is going to happen to you. So it uh, didn't worry me. But the PD say you don't use blood. They put a tube in your, in your abdomen, and uh, from the your fluids that they go in, and they do the same thing as the machine does. So I said, OK, I'll, uh, I'll try that one, because it's not, it won't be messy. <laughs> it takes about, about half an hour. To, uh, to do it, because by the time it's uh, drain out, and then they put the other bag in. So I start doing three bags, and that was, that's fine, because I do one in the morning when they get up, and they do one during the day, and one at night before I go to bed. So that's okay, and uh, I said, if somebody's working, they can do it when they get up in the morning, and go to work. And during the lunch hour, they can, uh, they can do the middle one. And the night time when they get home, they can do the third one. So uh, and it's that ideal for people who are working. So I said, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll try that one. If you want to go out, you can take a bag with you. Provided the place you're going to do it, you know, is, uh, is clean. You can, you can do it there. I go, I have showers. And you have a, a plaster so that you put the over the tube so you don't the get the, the dressing won't get wet. And you can uh, you can uh, you can shower and it won't get wet. Just uh, like nothing. Then I don't feel different to uh, to you. I just I mean I'm, I'm just stuck here for half an hour, that's all. Before I have this uh, kidney failure, I used to go regular to the West Indies for holiday. I had to give, uh, say, three months notice of a holiday when we were going, so they could arrange with Unicare to uh, ship the things there. So I told them, and they shipped it there. So when I got there, it was there. So there was no problem with the boxes. Guns all right, there just no, was no different to doing it here. When I was going on the dialysis and the, the PD, they say, well, you can store your boxes provided in, 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 in the garden, provided they're not uh, wet or damp, so the box will get wet. But I decided I would, uh, I would convert my, uh, my garage. I get the delivery once a month. I got the the dates when the, of the delivery. Uh, Baxter would phone me and uh, ask me what have I got in stock. And so from there, they would uh, replenish my stock. The, the driver, he, uh, he put them where he want them. He take them in and put them where he want them, and that's it. I feel fine. You know, I can do, I can do anything. It doesn't hinder me from doing anything I want to do. I can go where I want to go, and I can do whatever I want to do. I'd started on, on, on CAPD, so I was familiar with that anyway. 
Uh, the machine was the same sort of connection, so it wasn't a problem there. And it, it went fine, it went fine, yeah. I've been on APD for about five years now. It's sort of become part of the life, really. Well, I was given the, given the choice. This seemed to me to be much better for me, for my sort of lifestyle, really. The day uh, is free. I don't have any, anything, uh, anything to do during the day at all, not with the dialysis. Um, whereas uh, all the other types uh, took up some of the daytime. Um, and hopefully you sleep through, through it, really. I've got a spare bedroom uh, as I live in my own uh, in the house. Now I can keep all my uh, the equipment in. And there's quite a few boxes. Um, it's uh, I mean it mounts to a box, a box and a bit a day. Well, mainly the first thing you do is load the thing up with with the um, bags of solutions. Um, when you go to bed, it's warmed up because the one that goes in you has to be slightly warm, you know, body temperature. Um, and uh, it's a matter of just going through the procedure of clamps, little clamps and things that you've disengaged and, and a couple of uh, buttons to push and the connection to your, to your uh, catheter and um, go to bed, really. <laughs> you try not to get tangled with the thing you do have um, you do have to be a little bit careful there. This is the end of the of the, of the catheter, um, and this is the part that connects to the machine. Uh, it's got a little tap on it, which you turn, and this is the cap which you take off and connect this to in the night. That's uh, that's it really. You can travel. Uh, you obviously, if you're going abroad, you've got to take your machine with you. Um, but you, the actual solutions can be uh, sent sent on, uh, and back should actually do that as part of the service. It's got its own case which it fits into, uh, so that uh, you can't sort of damage it, and uh, and it's got wheels on it, so you can you can yeah, you can carry it about. Yeah, I've, st I've stayed in, in quite a number of cottages in Devon and Cornwall. It's quite easy, really. And again, of course, it gives you all the day to go out and enjoy the, uh, your holiday. So the, in that respect, the machines are much better, I think, personally. <laughs> it suits me. You're walking around with two litres in your tummy all the time. But you don't notice it, it's strange really. Um, I, I thought it would. The only thing you do notice is that you have to change the size of your trousers um, and it goes up a couple of inches. <laughs> so, <laughs> I suppose it's old age really that's, that, that, um, that restricts you more than the dialysis in a way. So it's no secret. Really, it's uh, it's just a, a a thing you have to do now. That certainly makes you more independent. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I I, I accept it and do it, and it's part of uh, part of living really. Now, uh, just part of your life. My name is Mary and I'm on assisted peritoneal dialysis. You know, as far as I could, I, I just put it out of my mind until my next appointment and then had to, had to sort of, you know, face reality. But I was rather hoping that, having also read up quite a bit about it, about kidney disease and uh, kidney failure and um, 
the various forms of treatment. I decided that perhaps the best thing for me would be dialysis. I think sort of um, hiding my head in the sand as it were, <laughs> hoping, hoping it would go away if I ignored it. <laughs> that was really it. But I mean, I knew perfectly well it wouldn't go away. I'd have to face reality at some stage. I've got um, a healthcare worker who comes in every day, which is a wonderful service. She sorts the machine out and sets it up and uh, gets it all ready for me to uh, to um, get myself on it at night, which is quite simple. We obviously come in, we make sure she's she's all right, um, make sure the therapy went well, there was no alarms during the night. Um, take her weight, make sure she's got uh, no fluid overloaded. Um, make sure the machine's clean, make sure there's enough stock in the, in the spare room and um, set it back up using the target weight prescription or whatever prescription's needed really. But um, with us coming in, we, like I said, we have a good chat, we, you know, you get to know the, the clients and stuff and, and it's, it's company for them as well. Even though it's between half an hour and an hour, it's, it's somebody coming in every day. Um, it depends how elderly they are and their, their illness is, it's somebody to check up on them as well, make sure they're all right. It's, oh, it's a very good system. It's great. It suits me fine. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. Well, yes, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I now feel it's sort of something that it happens, you know, it's, an, it's part of my normal routine now to attach myself to a machine before I go to bed. Sometimes I lie on the, um, I lie on the tube and the alarm does sound and um, I just sit, sit up and, you know, um, reorganise the, 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 the tubing and that's fine, I go off to sleep again. Very good. Um, I could, there's uh, an emergency number on the machine that you've telephoned if you're having problems. And um, they're very, very good, they answer straight away. And then your call goes through to America, to the manufacturer, to Baxter Company. And you get a technician from there who gives you advice over the phone. Well, I have a dress. There's a there's a dressing on it. There's a waterproof dressing on the actual um, tube insertion, and then the the uh, the other end of the tube, which I attach to my abdomen, with also with a waterproof um, dressing over it, and that's fine. So I have a shower every morning. It's amazing because um, I thought I would. You know, um, I would feel having flu. I, I would feel fluid in my abdomen, but I don't. In fact, I don't feel anything. It's all quite painless. <laughs> There's a lot of very good people around me, which is good. I have a lot of friends, and uh, they're very, very helpful. I couldn't manage without them. They take me to the hospital, shopping collect my prescription from the, from the pharmacy, from the chemist, um, and do everything for me. The, the Catholic Church, where there's always an appeal for something or another, um, and we always have sales of various things, so I make lots of jams and marmalades and preserves and um, chutneys and um, make, it, make some money for them. I, um, I run raffles, and um, what else do I do? I do flower arranging in the church. Uh, I think that's about all I do, really. Oh, much better, much better, I'm much happier now. I was, uh, very, I was very depressed, well, not actually depressed, I'm not a depressive person, but I was a bit sort of down when I wasn't feeling well. But um, I'm a great optimist. I knew I was going to get better, <laughs> and I am. <laughs> Thanks to all the patients who shared their stories on this DVD. I hope you find them useful and also reassuring as you prepare for dialysis. My advice would be to consider your own lifestyle and which dialysis option is going to work best for you. Talk things through with your healthcare team, other patients, 
with your family or friends and read all the available information. And remember, if you choose one option and find at some point further down the line you want or need to switch to an alternative, then that should be discussed with your healthcare team. And barring any personal medical reasons preventing it, this should be entirely possible. Above all, try and look forward to making the choice and taking control of your life. As always, whatever route you take, the more positive you can be, the better the outcome is likely to be. I certainly feel that life still has a lot to offer me and my family, and dialysis helped to make that possible. If you would like to share your own experiences of living with kidney disease, get in touch with Kidney Research UK. They would love to hear from you.